We're down in London with ARM. They've just announced the A50 series of processors. With me is Noel Hurley. Welcome to Hexus. Good to meet you. Noel, ARM obviously is a name familiar with Hexus readers. Can you give us a rundown on currently where ARM is sitting in the market? Okay, so um, we're, uh, as you all know, we're, we design microprocessors. Uh, we license those processors to semiconductor companies. We have our, um, over 300 semiconductor companies now that have uh, licensed our microprocessors. Um, and our main market is in the mobile uh, and increasingly into the tablet. And, and as our compute performance uh, increases, then we're moving increasingly into infrastructure and into the server market as, as well. So with the uh, instruction set that ARM's got, um, obviously building that ecosystem, that's phenomenal. Um, why, why do they come to you when you guys don't even make a chip? You know? Uh, well, microprocessors are that interface between hardware and software. Um, and it is a, it is a skill set um, that has developed over the years. And, and actually, one of the things that is unique about microprocessors is the real value is around the software that is, that is written for the microprocessor. So there is a real advantage in the semiconductor industry where you have one microprocessor architecture that many, many people can write software for. Uh, instead of a, an individual semiconductor company trying to um, establish its own uh, microprocessor architecture and then convince all of the operating system, all of the application software vendors to try and write just for their piece of silicon. So it's, it's about um, building an ecosystem and the value is in the ecosystem and the breadth and depth of, of software that is written for your microprocessor. So many of our, so our semiconductor vendors look, to, look for us to provide that uh, and in return, what they then do is take our, our technology and they dif add their differentiation um, to target it at whatever markets they wish to target. Okay. You guys are very dominant, obviously, in the smartphone and the tablet market yes. currently. And we've got Intel coming into that market. Yeah. How do you see yourselves defending against that sort of move by them? Um, I think... Uh, you have to continually strive. The, the, the mobile phone marketplace is all about um, developing performance for the um, lowest power. So it's all about performance and efficiency of the microprocessor. We have a lead in that place, in that, in that space. We've done it for the 20 years that the company's been going. It's always been our, our, our uh, mantra, is looking at performance per milliwatt and performance per energy consumed. How, how much of a lead do you think you guys have got in years, let's say, on the low power compute? I mean, if I look at, if I look at um, the Intel parts that have been uh, announced today, they are probably comparable with with uh, some of our Cortex A8 and A9 parts that we announced maybe five, six years ago. So since then, we have, we've announced uh, a new series of parts called the Cortex A15, and then today we've done the Cortex A50 series. So I would say we're probably two generations ahead. Okay, let's talk about A50. Obviously, it's the, yep. uh, the latest buzzword that's just come out today. Can you give us a rundown on it? It's obviously moving to 64-bit over 32-bit, yep. and you've got Big Little as well. Yeah, so what we've done with the Cortex A50 series is it's the first series of cores, and, and today we're announcing two of those, two of those products. Um, the Cortex A53, which is all about um, power efficiency, and it's looking at, at quadrupling the power efficiency over today's smartphones. And then we've got the Cortex A57, which is all about performance, and that's looking to triple the performance that you see in today's, in today's smartphones. And then what our semiconductor vendors will do is blend those together into big little configurations where you're able to blend performance and power efficiency together. Okay, so you say it's um, you know, a performance, is that based on the same manufacturing process as today's stuff? Or? It, it, it's, it's based upon what we're seeing um, today versus what we'll see delivered. So we're looking at uh, the A50 series will initially start to come out in 28 nanometer type, type production technologies. Um, so yeah, we're comparing today's products with with 28 nanometer. Okay, so worst case scenario, you'll get that performance increase. Worst case, maybe and more. then and then maybe more moving forward. Yes, as 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 manufacturing process takes on um, uh, improves, then we'll we'll take advantage of all of those Moore's law type. So when type you when we see this implementation coming through, obviously we've got at one end of the spectrum, you've got the smartphone stroke superphone, and the other end you've got servers. What sort of configuration do you think we'll see coming out? Um, so in the, in the uh, smartphone end of the marketplace, we're seeing dual quad A53s, Cortex A53s, which is the little core. And then as you add, need to add more performance for, for superphones, tablets, 
then we would expect to see dual core A57s alongside A53. So that gives you that big little trade-off between having the performance that you need for, for those compute intensive tasks and then backing off to more power efficient for your mainstream activities. And then as we move up that range, then you can start to see quad core bigs, quad core littles. Uh, so there'd be quad core A57s, quad core A53s, and then all the way up into the server space where you're looking at really quite compute intensive, then you're looking at much larger arrays of either, either the A57s or the A53s, depending on the type of performance characteristic that you, that you need. I guess another big play would be in networking where you need data throughput and not, it, not compute. Exactly. So in, in, in some networking activities, actually the compute requirement is really quite small, mm. but you're dealing with lots and lots of data and it has to be done within a specific time. So that lends itself to a sea of small cores as opposed to a, lar you know, a large core that's trying to handle lots and lots and lots of different threads. It is better and more power efficient to have seas of small mm. cores handling those types of activities. But then there are activities that require either a lot of maths or, or a lot of data processing where you do want a much more higher performant core to get that task done and completed. So with, um, with that in mind, you know, there's a lot of people anticipating ARM and Intel having a fight over certain customers to try mm. and you know, destroy each other, I guess, is probably a, a friendly way of putting it. You know, do you see it happening like that or do you see it more so, you know, you have specialist processes, specialist tasks, and the x86 can coexist with, you know, ARM as well? I, I, I agree. x86 and, and ARM will coexist. I think what we're seeing, what we're seeing in, in data centers is, is actually um, this concept that, that one size doesn't fit all. If you look at, if you look at racks today, it's, it's a single processor architecture and it's lots of them. But actually, as data centers mature, we're starting to understand that actually there are different tasks and the way in which, whether it be memcaching, whether it be some, um, you know, things like Hadoop or LAMP stacks versus then the more uh, mathematically uh, compute intensive tasks. So you're seeing different types of tasks within a data center. And, and, uh, and the economics from both a cost and a power perspective are driving people to look at optimizing for those different types of tasks. And that's where the ARM processor comes in because we have a very broad range of processors that can scale uh, in many different ways. But also at the same time as our business model because that allows a number of our semiconductor companies, uh, semiconductor partners, to specialize and focus in on different aspects of a data center. So it's not, I can see data centers not becoming just a vanilla rack of mm. how many cores can I fit in, but there'll be different parts to it. And each of those different problems will be solved with, with the most power efficient way mm. of, of uh, most power efficient technology that's most applicable. So they will coexist. So speaking of your business model, obviously you uh, license this to your partners and you take a small bit of royalty on each chip yeah. that's sold. You know, are you, are you guys commit to that business model forever or is, is there different models going to be coming in? Because at some point you guys are going to have to make a horrific amount of money um, because of the millions and millions of, of chips that are going to be selling in, you know, call it five years time. You know, your, your, your market's not going to get any smaller. Uh, no, and, and the, the growth that we see, uh, we, we expect to continue to see growth. Um, in our volumes. Today we're shipping over 4 billion, our partners are shipping over 4 billion ARM products a year. Um, we, we expect that to continue to grow and it's driven on a number of fronts, partly on the high performance end, but also um, we are uh, in a very strong position in the in, on the Internet of Things, which is at the very low end, which is um, partly meant all of these thousands and hundreds of thousands of different types of products that are feeding data into these data centers. Um, so we continue to see our, our volume shipments grow. Uh, in terms of business model, um, I think our business model has shown to be a successful one. It's a successful one from ARM's perspective, but it's also a successful one from Semiconductor Partners' perspective as well. Um, they clearly see value and benefit from adopting the ARM architecture and that's and and at the same time it's about coexisting with these partners we're not in the market or the business of trying to dominate um, the industry it's about um, it's about um, driving our business but at the same time we're successful when our partners are successful we need them to be successful as well so they're out shipping parts they're making profits so they can reinvest in new parts and we take 
what we think is a fair value mm -hmm. um, for the IP that we that we in, inject into that ecosystem. So carrying on the partner line, meaning when we, if you look at some of your partners, you know TI, Nvidia, mm -hmm. Qualcomm, and such, they were making their own graphics part. And they're not taking yeah. Marley from you guys. You know, does that does that concern you a little bit with the amount of investment you guys are putting behind Marley? You know, where will be the tipping point for them to suddenly adopt that? I, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's a concern in the sense that um, it clearly, as I come back to my previous point, we have to demonstrate value and that is, that is our challenge and that's what our guys, uh, our engineers and our, our teams uh, need to do. Um, and if we don't provide that value, um, then we'll need to work harder. Now, having said that, the Mali graphics is, um, is performing particularly well in things like the smart TV marketplace, which is where graphics is really accelerating. Uh, we are number one in that marketplace. Um, you will see that the growth in Mali graphics um, processing units is growing um, exceptionally quickly. So there is an adoption um, in the market, but there will always be semiconductor partners who have an expertise or feel that they want, wish to differentiate uh, you know whether it be through um, graphics processes or baseband processes or whatever, and, and that's fine. And that our business model can accommodate um, that type of differentiation. That that's good for the market. Okay. Um, just a uh, quick question about A50 again. What's the sort of development cycle and design cycle for you guys? From you know, we need to build a new um, new chip. Yep. This is it. What we're going to deliver to the market. How long is it? How long is the timeline on these things? So um, it, it depends on the complexity of the core that we're designing. So if we, if we just focus on the very top end ones, it might take us three years to develop um, the core itself um, from, from start to the point at which we deliver a solution to our semiconductor vendors. Um, traditionally, we used to then allow about uh, a year, 18 months for then the first sample silicon to be coming out and then another year before it hit, hit the shops. What we're actually seeing is in some of the markets, particularly around the high-end mobile and the tablet space, is that 18-month window is shrinking because um, our semiconductor partners wish to be more aggressive, so they are driving hard. So as soon as they get the delivery from us, then they're, they're, they're working as hard as they can to get sample silicon in front of customers. So we're looking at we're looking at now that, that what was a three, three four year period has now shrinking back to probably a two year period, almost 18 months to two years from the point at which we deliver the first um, drop of our soft cores into the semiconductor parts. So when do you think we'll see um, handsets and tablets shipping on? So I, I, I think we will, see, we will see silicon being sampled in 2014 and potentially devices in the market in the shops 2015. Okay, so my final question. Obviously the most exciting thing happened last week, which we haven't spoken about yet, Windows RT, which runs on ARM, has, has now been yep. announced, finally. Yes. Really great kept secret there. Um, <laughs> what does that mean for, for ARM? And also, what does that mean for you know, the Hexus Reader, where you know, they're going to have the option to buy a Windows 8 Pro device and also a Windows RT device that are identical apart from the chip inside them? Why would they go for the ARM device? Well... There is um, uh, the ARM device, and particularly around, around the Windows, Windows RT, and um, I think it was announced with uh, NVIDIA and Qualcomm. Um, ARM is traditionally a low power, high performance, performance core. So we would expect to see better battery life. And, and also, um, it allows you to put in smaller batteries, which me makes the product lighter, thinner, less heat no fans, those types, those types of things, which, which is, it comes down to the industrial and the ergonomics of the device. So we would expect to see... So what you're you know, trying nice to say thin. is, do you reckon that the ARM devices are going to be prettier? I think so. Okay. So there you have it. That's latest from ARM on the A50 line of processors.